My name is Caroline Callery and I'm a director here at Strokestown Park House, the home of the National Famine Museum in Strokestown, County Roscommon, Ireland. It is wonderful to be speaking to you on the 50th anniversary of Ireland's entry into the European Union. The National Famine Museum is an acknowledged seat of learning at Strokestown Park House on the National Great Famine of the 1840s in Ireland. It has been acknowledged as the greatest catastrophe of 19th century Europe. Jim Callery purchased the house, discovered an amazing archive of the famine material in 1979 and created the National Famine Museum. Mr. Jim Callery bought the country estate of Strokestown Park in 1979 when it was in a very serious and advancing state of decay. He has since spent millions of his own money along with help from European Union funds on its recovery. The jury applauds that he has ensured an expert restoration of the house, opened it up to the Irish public and has preserved this important memorial to the Irish famine. Award winner in the category Dedicated Service, Mr Jim Callery, County Roscommon, Ireland. His philanthropy over four decades has been acknowledged by the European Union when in 2017 he received the Europa Nostra Award for Dedicated Services to Culture and Heritage. Hello, my name is Caroline Nash and I was commissioned by the Strokestown Park House and Famine Museum to do a feasibility study on the house and the museum. This was funded by the Roscommon Leader Partnership um, through the European Union and the Rural Development Fund and this allowed me to explore possibilities for bringing international visitors to the house and the museum. So in the course of doing this, um, we looked at all the possibilities and what is on offer for the international visitor to the museum and the house. And really, it wasn't only just on the grounds here, it was looking at the surrounding town and the areas and uh, what is on offer from everything from archaeology, photography, gardening, as well as obviously the uh, wealth of history that's here in the museum with the archive from the famine. So this year is the 50th anniversary of Ireland's accession to the European Union and I mean Ireland's membership of the European Union has been nothing but positive, particularly for rural Ireland and for places like Strokestown, um, particularly the museum where we have Irish life preserved, if you like, and uh, on view for the rest of the world to admire and to learn from for many, many years to come. Hi there, I am very excited to be in Strokestown to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the European Union and Ireland's membership in the, in the European Union. My name is Gemma Lee, I work for Lairgis and I am the Senior Support and Development Officer that looks after adult education Erasmus Plus projects. Erasmus Plus is a European programme that supports organisations to share and learn from each other right across Europe. As I mentioned, my role is in adult education, but we define adult education very broadly. So it includes the formal, the non-formal and the informal sectors. And it absolutely includes museums, libraries and all of those kinds of organisations. In terms of the opportunities that are possible, there are so many different things that our museums could take part in. So if maybe their staff wanted to do some upskilling, to visit some other museums around Europe, to learn how they do things there, they could go on a training course, they could do some job shadowing. There's endless opportunities. I think the real goal of it is that 
there might be so much more interesting ideas happening around Europe. So let's not try to create new ideas ourselves and starting from scratch all the time, when actually somebody else might already have a fantastic idea that we can learn from them. I should say that Erasmus opportunities are not just for staff. There's also great opportunities for if you have volunteers working in museums, maybe they're tour guides, maybe you have a docent program. There's fabulous opportunities for them to take part in these activities too and also for the participants. So if your museum is running some kind of a program for the local community, any kind of educational program, as I said, non-formal, informal, those are all included too. And there's fabulous opportunities for those participants to exchange with other participants around Europe to learn and share with them. I'm Jerry O'Sullivan and for about 15 years, I was the national director for the Erasmus program at the Higher Education Authority in Dublin. But since 1987, when the programme started, under a commissioner from Ireland, Peter Sutherland, some 70,000 students and staff have been beneficiaries in the sense that they have travelled overseas for study and for work. And it's an important thing to commemorate on this, the 50th anniversary of the European Union, to developing the potential of our people. And in there, I see a role for museums and Erasmus it would involve a collaboration uh, between the museums in Ireland and higher education institutions because when European funding comes into the consideration of people, it is about collaborating across European frontiers. That's the purpose of the European Union. That is the purpose why there's money made available. So I see opportunities there because they are both about creating knowledge, restoring knowledge, and transmitting that knowledge to future generations. So Dear Gweave Galair, uh, it's Mr. Michael Dorley. I'm the Head of Global Citizenship Education in Concern Worldwide. And I'm really delighted to be here in Strokestown at the Famine Museum to be part of this Ireland in Europe 50 year event. We are in Concern part of the Alliance 2015, which is a association of eight NGOs based in Europe but who work on an international development scale. Through Europe's DEAR fund, uh, a recent campaign was Food Right Now that was conducted across 14 different countries in Europe which kind of highlighted the plight of those suffering from hunger in our world today. It looked at the causes, uh, the drivers of hunger, everything from climate change to conflict to poverty to inequality, and sought to engage public, engage decision makers, policy makers on how we as a European community can contribute to ending hunger in our world today. Another one of the campaigns that the uh, Deer Fund has supported is our current campaign called One Planet for All, which again looks at hunger but through the lens of climate change and sees climate change obviously as a driver of hunger in our world today. And again, as young people who the campaign is aimed at, how can they raise their voices to not only combat climate change, but also combat hunger in our world. We very much welcome the opportunities that places like the Strokestown Famine Museum provide for the public to not only keep the memory of the famine alive, but to protect that memory and to challenge all those who visit, whether they're young, whether they're just ordinary members of the public, on how we can contribute to tackling famine in our world today. So here it's Johnstown Castle and the Irish Agricultural Museum and Famine Exhibition. Kind of puts us in mind of, of a lot of the work that Concern is doing in many countries in Sub-Saharan Africa in relation to famine relief and prevention uh, through programs such as seed and tool distribution, through our climate smart agriculture, through livelihoods training. Uh, as well as through some of our emergency responses, like the European Union funded Ernie program.
ERNI stands for Enhanced Response for Nutrition Emergencies. It's a multi-year program that is funded by the European Union's humanitarian funding stream. It has the ability to respond to nutrition emergencies while at the same time working with health facilities to build their capacity to respond in the longer term. Enhanced Response to Nutritional Emergency started here in June 2020. Previously, the mothers were not well educated. The trust of the health was uh, not that much, but after they have been educated, their attitude has been changed, and then trust has come through time. مرك <تصفيق> انتي انا اشرحن قادمي انا طبخن قادمي جدهان ايو كرسيمها ايو مسكحها ايو عافمات كوبا هاو فرح سنة هاي مال ايا هابين انا اشرح برطو عن دكتور او كفا ايدا دات كان انا فايدة ايدا وانا نقوم سيب برا We can see big change in the attitude of the mothers and also the fathers. This has been achieved through the education of the mothers, especially mother to mother support group, father to father support group, where the mothers have begun prenatal, postnatal, antenatal care education. The mother knows at this time she has to exclusively breastfeed her baby up to six months, and the mother has to have ANC follow up. This plays a very crucial role in our delivering the service to the attitude of the society, and this has changed many things in the health center, I can say. We are striving to address the underlying causes of poverty and vulnerability, but at the same time, we have these shocks and crises that are coming from climate change, from conflict. So it's really, really important to have a funding facility as is provided by the European Union's ECHO humanitarian funding to support longer term development, system strengthening, but at the same time have that flexibility to respond to these crises. So CONCERN was founded at a time of both uh, famine and war and in response to civil war that was taking place in Biafra uh, in Nigeria. Um, a group of Catholic and Protestant missionaries who were there at the time sent a, an SOS appeal to the Irish public. Uh, SOS in this instance stood for send one ship and the Irish public responded with huge generosity, sending not just one ship, but three ships loaded with medical supplies, blankets and what have you. In trying to understand, I suppose, the generosity of the Irish public over the years, many say we have famine in our DNA and that because of, of, of that famine, we know what it's like to be hungry. We know what it's like to live in a time of conflict. We know what it's like to have to emigrate. And so that has stayed with us uh, over the years. And that very much has also determined the kind of the work that CONCERN does. That we continue this day to work in places of conflict, hunger and famine. So here in Johnstown Museum, as well as in, in Strokestown, pineapples were grown in the greenhouses for the landowners and, and, and the aristocracy, clearly meant only for themselves, whereas the resources that they could have used to provide nutritious food for the starving masses was just not done. An injustice then, which reminds us today that we must 
double our efforts to be more innovative, more creative and find ways to provide nutritious food, particularly those who are suffering from hunger and famine. I suppose a lot, a lot of concerns work uh, in responding to famine is there'll be a lot of innovation in terms of the kind of nutrition, the kind of food, the kind of techniques that we would need to have to ensure that those who are suffering hunger receive that proper nutrition. So whether it's through vegetable gardens, you know, kitchen gardens, whether it is through plumpy nut bars, which are distributed during times of extreme famine. This year, 2023, is the 50th anniversary of Ireland's accession to the European Union. The EU is one of the most generous donors of development and humanitarian aid globally, and it has been an important partner for Concern Worldwide for many years. In 2020, Concern entered into a unique three-year programmatic partnership with the EU. Under this partnership, the EU is providing a total of 30 million euros to fund Concern's Enhanced Responses to Nutrition Emergencies programme. The Ernie programme, as it is known, provides life-saving health and nutrition services and emergency cash transfers to children and their families in five of the poorest countries in sub-Saharan Africa. Thanks to EU funding, Concern has been able to support over one million poor and vulnerable people, including helping over 100,000 children under five recover from acute malnutrition and hunger. It is a flexible project, so it is emergency sensitive. The major focus of this cash is the most vulnerable households in the remotest part of the country. Here in Somali, in both Lagahid and Salahad Waradas, drought is the top priority risk in the area. So we identified the major indicators, for example, rainfall, uh, market price of food. Based on our data collected, we feel that the thresholds are met, so we have to act as soon as possible. Salahat is a Warada which is 450 kilometers far from the regional town, Chichiga. There is no bank, no light, no power, no water, so it was really very challenging. Cash transfer is very well suited to this condition. It's easier and quick. <laughs> ولكن <laughs> تتك 
ከምኩምስ በወቅቱ መዳን ስለመስጥ በወቅቱ ትግረኛ ስለነበርኩኝ ስለደረሰልኝ ሁሉ ነገር ገዛ ብቻ ተጠቅመኝበታለሁ እኔ በወቅቱ እንደደረሱልኝ በጣም ነው ማመሰግን ምስጋና አቀርባለሁ እና ይሄ ነገር ደግሞ ያው እንግዲህ መዳን እና ምስልም ነው እንደ አንድ ነገር ብንረዳ እኔ ደስ ይለኛል እኔ ለራሴ እረዳት የለኝም እነሱ ናቸው በቃ ከማንም መንጭቀው ኳራቤ ካልኳቸው እነሱ ልም ሰጡኝ እንጂ ሚረዳይ ሰው የለም ብቻኛ ነው በቃ so far we distributed cash early cash for 1200 households and we will do the same for the remaining 800 households currently in amhara we have reached more than 56000 populations for concern this is our uh, high achievement just to penetrate in during the crisis 